In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Eternal and Almighty God, we have gathered here to follow the path to Calvary made by the bleeding footsteps of thy beloved Son. Grant me to seize thee, that this exercise may cause our minds to be impressed with the price of our redemption, our wills to renounce sin forever, and our hearts to return in the fullest human measure the love they owe to him who has ransomed us in his blood. And since we can work a plenary indulgence by the praying of the devout praying of the saints of the cross, I ask you to call the individual to mind from whom you will get this plenary indulgence. Almighty Father, by shedding his blood for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, establish the Paschal mystery. In your goodness, make us holy and watch over us always. By partaking in this mystery of the Passion and the death of your Son, may we live a life unceasingly devoted to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. First station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Pilate is afraid. He has looked into the eyes of Jesus and seen there more than an ordinary man. And yet he's afraid of the people. He washes his hands, a feeble gesture, but the blood of Jesus will cry out from the ground against him. Take you him and crucify him the sentence of a coward. And so Pilate leaves Jesus, walks away worried but unconverted. I might have done the same. In a way, I have done the same. Whenever I have allowed human respect to keep me from doing what Jesus wills, I look into his face many times, and often I go away from him, afraid but unchanged. The Jews condemn thee, Jesus, with their lips. I have condemned thee with my heart. Whenever I was afraid of thy standards, afraid to lead a Catholic life, let me never wash my hands of thee, for just so surely as I do, they will be washed in thy blood. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The heavy, bulky cross is put upon the torn and aching back of Jesus. A huge cross, too, for they have made up their minds to hang him high. But he receives it gladly, thinking, for this came I into the world, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. When Jesus accepts the cross willingly, he's really accepting my load of sin. I have cast it upon his slender back, and it is so intolerably heavy that he can hardly drag it along. Divine bearer of my cross, I would take it back now if I could. It became heavier and heavier since the day of my baptism, little by little, sin by sin. It sinks all but thy infinitely generous spirit, which would carry it. 
One thing I can surely do, dear Lord, that I will do. Keep it from getting heavier. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Third station, Jesus falls. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The road swings higher and more difficult from the city towards Calvary. With that great weight upon his shoulders, the stones press into his feet and make them bleed. He can scarcely see the way. His stiffened garment clings hard to his exhausted body. His breath is gone, he becomes dizzy, he stumbles and falls. Sin made the road long and high and painful. They pierced his feet, they reopened his wounds, they blinded him and made him real. They weakened him, they threw him to the ground. My sins. Oh Jesus, how can I ever be slothful or indifferent to the sacred duties thou hast put upon me when I see thee using all thy feeble strength to get to the top of Calvary for my redemption? By thy weakness, Lord, Make me stronger, and if betimes times the burden make me sink, do thou lighten it for a spell until I get more strength. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Of all the sacred spots in the Holy Land, what a memory is here. What must they have thought, those two, as they gazed the one at the other? Again, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there, not bearing cross upon her shoulder or crown of thorns upon her brow, but carrying the agony of them in her heart and in a mother's way. Could it be that I have brought this upon his mother too? Must he bear not only his own sufferings, but hers and for me? If ever I am asked to bear a cross, I must remember to look up. Perchance I may see that sad and tender mother's face in the turning of the way. I wish, my Lord, that I could give thee back to her. If only this had never happened, thou were back at Nazareth, where she could smile and care for thee, but no. The selfishness of my life, my uncharitable thoughts and deeds, the hardness of my heart, have torn thee apart from her. Thou must go thy painful way alone and unconsoled, even by thy mother's face. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace.
of his station, Simon is forced to help Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The strength of Jesus is going fast, and each aching step begins to seem more and more unbearable. The march is slow, and the Pharisees look uneasily toward the bare hilltop. Someone must be God to help him, for he must not die at the roadside. He must be crucified. And with the sign above him, upon which they would write, he said, he was our king. My Redeemer needs help, but he accepts it only that he may get to Calvary and pay in full the price my sins have cost. Dear Jesus, I should go out from among the rabble and claim thy cross. I should take Simon's place in helping thee at least. But then I fear what men may think of me if I should take thy part. Teach me, Lord, to carry my own cross, and do thou share the burden with me, for I am weak. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. She is not afraid of what the crowd will say, but forces her way through the curious, gaping townsfolk to wipe off the pouring sweat and blood that blinded him. And for an everlasting testimony of her kindness, she brings away the impression of his sacred countenance. For the rest of her life, she will gaze upon that napkin and see and photograph the sufferings of the Son of God for men. And I, I do nothing but gaze at him from the side. I do nothing but look dismayed upon his fervent face and streaming wounds. As always, I have come to him empty-handed. In church, I have no prayers for him. In Lent, I have hardly mourned him. At his passion, I have brought him but little comfort. O loving Savior, give me the courage, this good woman, let me wipe thy bruised face by my acts of kindness to those who are suffering around me. Imprint the image of thy sufferings upon my heart. Let me carry it and cherish it all the days of my life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. seventh station. Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The little comfort that Veronica gave could not soothe him long. It must be balanced by keener suffering. As Jesus almost blindly struggles on, he loses his footing, is overcome by sickening weakness, and falls with a heavy thud to the ground. Every wound from the scourging and from the thorns begins to bleed afresh and the shock is beyond endurance. Perhaps he wonders if he can rise ever again. But, he's, but see, he tries. By this time he has been roughly dragged to his feet. There are times when I am willing to stay under the weight of sin, too sullen and too weak to rise, maybe not even caring to rise. My moral stamina seems gone. But when I see the all-holy and innocent Son of God exert every sinew and muscle to get to his feet, 
I know the lesson I must learn. Through my tears of repentance, good Jesus, I see thy pallid face, thy parched lips, thy quivering hands and feet, thy beaten body lying in the dust. Thy strength might not have given out if only I had sooner tried to rise from my sin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Just at the side of this disordered procession, there are a few women with their faces buried in their hands. They cannot stand the sight of so, such cruelty, so intolerable. They weep. Jesus raises his eyes, opens his dry lips, and speaks. Weep not for me, but for yourselves and your sinful city. Hardly a week ago, he had sat on the brow of a hill that looked into the heart of Jerusalem and had burst into tears. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if only thou hadst known, but thou wouldst not. How is it that sometimes I am deeply moved when I think upon thy tragic journey, but presently I go back to my life and occupation and forget what I have seen and thought? It must be that I am moved by passing pity, not by sincere compunction. That while my heart aches at the sight of thy sufferings, I have forgotten to strike my breast, and my will remains untouched in the midst of my stirred emotions. Merciful Savior, I have been listening to thy advice all my life. Let me not fail to heed it now, when thou art so near to death. Suffer me not to be among those who will cry out to the mountains to fall upon them, and the hills to cover them. No, I am determined that henceforth my sorrow will arise from a heart that is done with sin, but cannot forget its infidelity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, Rest in peace. The ninth station. Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He reels and sickens again. All is blurred before him. His knees give way, and bewildered and terrified, he crashes to the ground, and the cross comes toppling on top of him. For a second, his consciousness is leaving him, but he's revived by curses and kicks, as he had been a fallen beast. Can it be that there are times when I am insensible to my condition, when my conscience is so dull that I hardly realize I am in sin? That is what my guiltless Savior expiates for me. As I look upon him now, my wickedness, negligence, my spirit of indifference about overcoming so many weaknesses and my complacency in evil. 
Now, dear Lord, the lesson I received at thy second fall should have been enough, but no. There is another fall and a worse one. It proves what I would be slow to believe. I can lie prostrate and insensible in sin. I will rise again, dear Jesus. I will rise, even if thy rising must end on Calvary. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The world snatches from our Lord's back what little he has left of its goods. And there he stands, naked before the leering rabble. Oh, the outrage. But this is the lamb brought before his shearers, and he opens not his mouth. I am filled with frightful confusion when I look upon my Savior, naked and meek, ready to give his innocent body to the executioners. I know he is atoning for my excesses and immodesties, and yet I hesitate to give up what is pleasure for me. Dear wounded master, make me realize how soon the goods of this world may be taken from me. Let me never set my heart on them. And above all, make me pure in thought and word and deed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Not a sob, not a murmur of resistance escapes him as he is laid on the altar of the cross. Back at Nazareth, years and years ago, he had seen the shadow of this moment, and so he gives over the noblest hand that has ever been raised on this earth to be nailed down and riveted to the hardwood. It is too much. I cannot bear to think that the innocent hand he puts forth is to be hammered down while my stubborn and wafered will goes unchecked and free. I do what I please. Often I fight for my sinful freedom. And he is nailed to these wooden beams as if he would try to run away from expiating my sins. O most holy Lord, how can I look upon thy, thy body, mangled and torn, breathing beneath the torture of the nails, and yet hesitate to decide, here and now, never to pain thee more. I make my act of contrition as the cross is thumped into its place. Lamb of God, remember me, so miserable, so ungrateful, so unworthy of thy love. Oh my God, I'm hardly sorry for having offended thee. I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell most of all because they offend thee, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, do penance, and amend my life. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace.
twelfth day school. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. No wonder Jesus dies. That he should have lived so long is a miracle. How does he die? Asking pardon for those who have murdered him, promising heaven to the repentant thief, commanding his mother to his beloved disciple, and yielding up his soul to his father. Nature is convulsed. Never since time began, since the first cloud flitted across the sky, has there been anything like this. The atmosphere has been tense all day, but now the sun can look no longer. The wind and the thunder and the lightning and the very face of the earth must protest against men for this unspeakable act. Even the dead must rise from their graves, where there could be no rest at so horrible a moment. And I stand, twenty centuries away, frightened at what I see, and yet withal consoled. For in the darkness that covers the earth, I dimly trace out with my eye the two slender arms that are stretched apart to receive me, and the head bowed down to whisper forgiveness. Beloved Jesus, thou hast redeemed me. To the very last thou hast shown me how I ought to live and with what dispositions I should die. Surely, there is no excuse for me if I am lost. I must not perish in my sins, my Savior. I must not perish in my sins. It has cost thee too much to save me. I look up at thy face and it bends forward from the cross. In my heart are the words, I know that my Redeemer liveth and will have mercy on me. Forgive my sins, O Lord. Forgive my sins, O Lord. I will confess them, for I know you will forgive them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us all our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. station, the body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The crowd has gone home. The only ones left are the few brave followers who are not ashamed to be seen with Jesus. They tenderly lowered the sacred body from the cross. It's almost the first time since the beginning of his passion that gentle hands have touched him. But it is too late. The mother is there. She's there for every crisis. She takes a last look at his dead face, kisses his sacred brow, and helps prepare him for the grave. I hope the past is forgiven. I hope it is buried as he is shortly to be. But never must there arise from its grave one sin that I have buried today. Otherwise, I belong not with the group of sorrowing friends around the body of Jesus, but back in Jerusalem with the Pharisees, who are even now exulting in their wicked victory and rejoicing that they had safely escaped the terrors of the darkness. Keep before me, most loving Savior, keep fast and forever before me the harm I have done thee by my sins. It is the only way to make me change and persevere in my good resolves. Let me look upon the cross as it stands before the sullen sky. Let me draw closer and see the stains of blood upon it. While it reminds me of my past offenses, it will also be to me a token of hope and forgiveness and the inspiration to a holy life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The sacred body of our Lord is carefully brought to the sepulchre. Now that his life of poverty is over, his few friends must lend him a grave. There they lay him and turn away with heavy hearts. And John takes Mary, his new mother, upon his arm and leads her slowly from the scene that she can never, never forget through all the endless ages. Let me stay beside the tomb. Let me be near the body of my Lord, for I must still abide and repeat acts of sorrow. I must give some indication that I intend never to be separated from him again. Beloved Savior of men, keep me near thee always, even at such times as thou mayst seem to be motionless as in a tomb. Let Joseph close it up, and let the Jews put upon it their brittle seals, but I will wait until the angel comes rolls away the stone. Then may I greet thee at thy rising to the new and glorious life which thou hast purchased for me at so dreadful a cause. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. 
uh, take your uh, station booklets home with you, and then just bring it next week if you come to the next station.